Welcome to another exciting episode of The Trading Bell. Today on the program, we have a special guest, and that is the group CEO of KCB, Joshua Oigara. Joshua Oigara will be talking to us about the bank's next move following the acquisition of National Bank of Kenya. What does this mean for the banking sector as well as to the customers and shareholders at the end of the day? But before we get into the interview, let's take a quick look at Joshua's profile. Joshua Oigara, CBS, is a member of the KCB Group PLC and KCB Bank Kenya boards, as well as the KCB Group Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director. He is the Chairman of the Energy and Regulatory Commission of Kenya, a Director of the Vision 2030 Delivery Board, and he was commended by His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta on the award of Chief of the Order of the Burning Spear, CBS, for exemplary service to the people and nation of Kenya. He is also the Chairman Kenya Bankers Association, the Banking Industry Lobby. Listed as one of Africa's top 25 leaders to watch based on his role to champion transformational leadership and change on the continent by the Financial Times, Joshua actively engages at national and industry levels to drive this agenda. Joshua was named among the top 100 youngest and most influential economic leaders in Africa. He was recently named CEO of the Year in East Africa by The Banker Africa and captains the largest indigenous bank in the East African region with assets of over $6.5 billion and a market capitalization of over $1.4 billion. Thank you, Joshua, for making time for Thank us you, today. Abby, for hosting me. All right, uh, Joshua, historic day for the exchange and also for KCB, where we're seeing the listed of uh, the, 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 the listing of shares actually for following the acquisition of National Bank of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of hype around this. And right. perhaps why is there excitement really? Well, you know, because first we are coming to the exchange. To raise money. Sure. Yeah, I mean, there are many, many people saying, can I really go to the Nairobi Securities Exchange to raise capital to be yeah. able to expand my business? And we are saying in this morning that it is the place to go for mm -hmm. listed entities, it's a place to go for new entities that want to come into the market. Mm -hmm. And lastly, that we are able to do the transaction in a short period of time. So that is the excitement. Now, we are listing today 143, 142.9 million shares of market value of over 6 billion. Yeah, that is, a, and we've raised that money in the exchange. That, mm -hmm. for me, is the excitement we face today in our market. Uh, of course, interesting times for the banking sector. And Joshua, for the customers and, of course, for the shareholders across the board, mm -hmm. what does this mean, really, when you look at the big picture? So, so this, I would say there's, like, uh, many beneficiaries. Uh, you know, if I pick the most critical ones today, is the customers of the National Bank and the bigger KCB group. Mm -hmm. Because before, they were not getting enough access to, to, to capital, so liquidity was a challenge because we didn't have enough capital. Number two, in terms of investment in uh, new technology and systems, mm -hmm. that has dragged behind. And number three, there was always this kind of fear, <coughs> what's going to happen with my bank? Is it going to exist or not to exist? And, and the banks have, uh, customers have a very long relationship with, with yeah. their banks. Yeah. For a long time, it's proven in our market. Mm -hmm. If you look at the data which was done by the FSD, the financial deepening mm -hmm. uh, department today, you find that customers actually stay on quite longer for their institutions. Uh, and number two is the shareholders. NBK had 54,000 shareholders who had kind of been locked in uh, in a stock that they didn't want to exit because the market value had been coming down very dramatically. Sure. Remember at one time NBK was valued a, a share at almost 10 shillings. By the time we did this transaction, the share price of NBK was 3 shillings and maybe 25 or 30 cents. Mm -hmm. So that contraction of value wasn't a real, the bank never lost the assets. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would say that there was a delta adjustment, which was not based on a market valuation. And then lastly, the entire banking industry. So this is the tenth um, transaction in the financial sector, which is a consolidation. And it is the largest mm -hmm. transaction today. So we've been seeing that over time, markets are getting consolidated, customers are getting fewer choices, mm -hmm. but banks are becoming stronger. And stronger banks are good, not just for our customers and shareholders and community, but they are good for the country and they are good for economic development. All right. And Joshua, you've touted this uh, takeover as a friendly takeover. Of course, uh, we've yeah. seen uh, in other jurisdictions where there are hostile takeovers. Correct. And uh, from your experience, of course, being the big brother in the banking sector, 
uh, of course also handling matters to do with other banks that were in distress. Um, for KCB, what vibrancy does this bring to the brand KCB and of course the roadmap in terms of growing the bank and uh, growing uh, the financial sector at large? It's very exciting for us. So first, we are the only bank with two banking licenses in the market. So it tells you, you asked me about friendly <coughs> takeover. It's our history. Yeah. Remember that we are not always the big brother. <laughs> <laughs> our history shows that we also at one time had difficulties. We've grown to become the largest institution. Mm. So what I will say that uh, we see two main distinct value of this, con this acquisition. Mm -hmm. We are very much aligned on our customer profile. So if you look at your, our customers in the energy sector, manufacturing sector, Ma and other people like in real estate, construction, oil and gas, mm -hmm. we are very much aligned between KCB and NBK and also a couple of other banks. Uh, and number two, in terms of our retail side, we are a big bank that actually has customers from government, both national government and county governments and what you call the departments and agencies. So that we are, we are very good at. We run that model. We are a big collector of taxes on behalf of the Kenya Revenue Authority and we've worked that very closely for many years. Mm -hmm. So what we'll do is to strengthen, so go for more market share. So that is the other excitement. So we have, the two banks today have a market share of 20%. Our real ambition is to increase that market share by 500 basis points in three years. That's a real ambition. Mm -hmm. Market shares in our markets don't change that much. And then lastly is to make sure that because NBK gets capitalized, we have a new brand. There's nothing as exciting like us as KCB owning a very strong brand with a lot of heritage as NBK. Mm -hmm. So it's a co-creation that we can have two strong institutions available. I mean, the capital adequacy issue will be fixed because we'll invest in this organization. Then we can now scale up opportunities for growth. We want to go into <coughs> small and medium enterprises uh, as a catalyst for growth. We are able to provide funding. We want to, with the digital lending space through mobile and payments, we are able to provide a solution for itself. What we may also do is to consolidate the back-end systems of the mm -hmm. two banks to make it seamless, a one-stop shop. But we are not asking our customers to change their account numbers. We are not asking our customers to be able to, to come to the bank and get their documentation done. We are mm -hmm. not asking them to change a new system. So in many ways, our customers are taking off. So what we were doing was enabling scaling. So if I asked to me, what will a customer when you to tomorrow? Go to your branch, get your relationship manager, ask for your requirements, get support, reach them on their social media, call them, WhatsApp them, you will get the feedback from the bank. All right. And uh, Joshua, what will this entail, especially to the ordinary customer sitting down in northern Kenya who is wondering, will KCB rebrand this bank? Will we see um, a bit of uh, branding happening? At the same time, the same customers also keen to know what plethora of products should they mm. expect now mm. that they're seeing KCB coming in with uh, a stronger financial uh, muscle or should I say a capital base that is quite uh, enormous? So if I look at our customers, so we continue to run two products. So we have got the no more conventional banking product that we operate uh, under NBK and also KCB. And also we have an Islamic window, mm -hmm. what you call a Sharia compliant window, which we operate under K NBK, what you call Amana, mm -hmm. or KCB, we call it Sahal Banking. Now those two, will cont and a number of our customers, whether they're in Nairobi or they're in Garissa, Mandera, Waijia, mm -hmm. they're Turkana, they're Lokchogio, all that, those customers, even all the way going down um, into Mombasa, Lamu, uh, you'll find Garasen, you'll find that there's a lot of activities in terms of this. So we are not rebranding. Yeah. Well, you may see a new coat of paint, okay. but that is just making sure that the colors for NBK are mm -hmm. visible. KCB colors will remain. Mm -hmm. um, the branches will remain. So there is optimization of the branches that we will have. Mm. Uh, NBK has got nearly 80 branches, mm. but the ones which are really operational today are 70. And we have got 200 branches. So in a way, this, we want to optimize where we can see the best value. But this is what I say to the customers of NBK. As long as they're able to come and support their bank, come in and get the trade services, get all the opportunities they need from the institution in terms of the lending product, account opening, their deposits, mm -hmm. the branch will continue to remain. Okay. So we are not today in a crisis of shutting down the branches mm -hmm. for NBK or KCB. That's okay. not the ambition. So for my customers who are sitting in, in northern part of Kenya or anywhere, I will say visit your branch. Yeah, it's much more vigorous. It has got the capital it needs. 
the services will come back that were not there before. Mm -hmm. So we will keep the best of both institutions. Okay. So you're asking me about new products. So we are very strong on the digital, especially on mobile. Yeah. Agency banking we have, our merchant businesses that we have, our lending products which we have. So that will continue to build. Our own social investment program like to Jajiri will extend into what we are doing in NBK today. And, and I see this as the best of both worlds. It's perhaps one of the most historic transactions in the financial sector. Mm -hmm. And perhaps that is why it was done in a very short period of time. Okay. And uh, Joshua, allow me to pick your mind as well. Um, now that we are having this um, takeover, of course, we anticipate there will be a bit of shake-ups in terms of the boards. Mm -hmm. And uh, perhaps if you could give us some insight. Mm -hmm. I, I recently saw you appointed a new uh, MD mm -hmm. to lead uh, NBK. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, what is in the pipeline, especially when it comes to having a key human resource to champion this next phase of the bank? Yeah, so, so it's, it's, uh, that's very correct. So we have appointed uh, one of our most experienced uh, senior management member, Paul Russo, as mm -hmm. a new managing director for National Bank. And, and this, is, this, I would say, is a natural process. Because once you have got a new team that is running the bank with a greater vision, changes in management are generally inevitable. But we have also given the former managing director, called William Musau, a responsibility within KCB mm -hmm. in terms of being able to support the integration. Yeah. So we are keeping both worlds. But your specific questions around what will you do with the management team? So mm -hmm. I speak to all my staff, uh, and we have almost 1,200 to 1,300 staff today in NBK. And we have almost 8,000 staff at KCB today on mm -hmm. all our businesses. Mm -hmm. So those that have continuously worked hard, delivered on their objectives, those have, they will, all their staffs will keep their job. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what I've seen from my, day, my few interactions with themselves. Yeah. So a new management team uh, with KCB uh, under, under NBK will largely be the people that have been running NBK. So I, I will not say that there will be a revolution. There will be a few new ones. Mm -hmm. I see that they have roles which have not been filled today, so they have some what are called vacancies, and those will be filled up sometime between now and December. Mm -hmm. The only thing we are waiting for now is a new board. So okay. we, it's true we said we are reorganizing the board of NBK. Mm -hmm. So the chairman who has served NBK for 10 years has expressed to retire, mm -hmm. and I'm very much grateful and indebted to Mohammed Hassan. I've known him for many years. And so we will have a new chairperson, we'll have a new board. Mm -hmm. uh, we will expe be expecting approval from the central bank uh, this month of, of, of October. Mm -hmm. So when that is unveiled, you then have a new team. So Paul, run, it's, it's a team of, I say, 10 senior leaders. Most of them will actually be the ones that will be running NBK. Mm -hmm. But the performance for our staff is what we will determine, yeah. like anywhere else, mm -hmm. whether you remain in the organization of NBK. Mm -hmm. You get me? So I mean, I there's a big it. concern that uh, yeah. people are going to leave. So I want to encourage my staff. Mm. The fear that they are going to lose their job is unfounded. Okay. Yeah. That's if right. they are delivering their work and I mean, so now we are looking at the performance of NBK and said, I've got my goals and priorities for the year. Mm. What I should be doing is chasing my effort to delivering them. Okay. And that's what gives you the job. All Nothing right. else. Joshua, let me also take you now to another uh, facet of this conversation. Mm -hmm. When you look at um, NBK, it was also a bank that had uh, toxic loans True. when you began the process. Mm -hmm. uh, what will happen to this uh, loans that you're inheriting? And uh, of course, knowing pretty well that um, a, a good chunk of uh, the banking sector right now is having a bit of a tightening of uh, liquidity, especially when you look at the interest rate cap, mm -hmm. as well as uh, a few other fundamentals when mm -hmm. it comes to the mm -hmm. non-performing loans. Okay, correct. Yeah. Correct. correct. For, wait, let me say that it's, you say you call it toxic. Let me say that it's not, not, not all loans in the, the industry, mm. uh, and I give you a picture of the industry because I, I also serve as a chairman of the governing council for the Kenya Bankers Association. Sure. So our non-performing loans, are around 12%. Mm -hmm. Industry loans, overall loans, are just almost 2.6 trillion. Mm -hmm. So 12% is quite a big number, right? And the gap for ourselves is to identify which sectors we face problems. So three problems have arisen. Government has not paid its contractors on time mm. for a while, and you know that's a challenge. And it's both national and county governments. Now, county governments affect a lot of the small and medium enterprises. Yeah. 
and you can see that this is the work that needs to be done to make payments happen. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had challenges on the real estate, uh, you know, projects and houses and uh, office blocks, office apartments, office, office buildings. Mm -hmm. we, we've got areas on manufacturing, maybe we had difficulties before, and finally we had challenges in agriculture. Yeah. So whether you see sugar industry and some, some areas of manufacturing as well. Mm -hmm. So NBK, as the Kenya the bank, has a fair share of his loan book where the customers are not performed. So I would like to say that it is few customers yeah, who yeah. have actually not paid. Mm. And therefore, it's not a systemic problem in the whole organization. Okay. Our experience is to recover mm. those loans. So if I look at our plan this year, we have a special asset team, which is very much knowledgeable with capacity mm -hmm. to be able to go after those loans, have a restructure, have conversation with owners. Mm -hmm. So that's what we will do in NBK. And I am confident that next year, we should have our quality of a loan book much down. So if I look at both sides, I think this is the worst. So we've kind of come to the worst. So the worst NPL level for NBK today at almost 50% mm -hmm. is the worst we have. We should expect to bring it down to 20% by next year. And the year after, our target is actually 8%. Okay. So it's, a, it's quite a dramatic reduction mm -hmm. or a huge upside on recovery. All right. We see that opportunity in the institution. So it's not all customers. It's very few customers. I, I, I always say that when you say it's, it's uh, toxic, it means that you have a systematic, oh, yes. yeah, uh -huh. isn't it? And uh -huh. it's prevalent. Yes. This is a case where you've got few customers. Unfortunately, they have a bigger size of hmm. loan they have taken. So I get a, a good example. If one of your customers is 10 billion, and your asset book is 100 billion, therein is 10% NPL. Mm. It's just one. Yet the bank has, got, yet one, the bank yeah. has 600,000 customers. Now mm. one cannot be toxic. But, but I must admit with you that it is one of our greatest challenges in acquiring national bank is that we have to put in mechanisms, yeah, plans to be able to resolve the recovery of those loans and bring them back to performance. Mm -hmm. That for me would be what I would say is an important aspect. So I'm excited both ways. And also writing new books, mm -hmm. giving new loans, getting new customers. Mm -hmm. NBK's a million customers, of which 600,000 are very active. How do we double it in the next one year? Mm -hmm. and, and it's important to have a different lens, that to build a stronger economy and have a stronger financial sector, mm -hmm. banks need to be able to work in more collaborations and they build common synergy for the basis of lifting our economy. It's very important. It's about scaling and lifting others up, which is why we went for NBK. Mm -hmm. Now, there are many people who will say, but why don't you leave the bank to fail? We're a small economy. If you let the little businesses you have to collapse, what about the future of our economy? What about the future opportunity for our young people? We need to be leaders that leapfrog opportunities. This, for me, is absolutely critical for leaders of enterprise today in our market. Amazing. And uh, Joshua, as we come to the conclusion, I wouldn't end the interview without uh, just getting your perspective around um, regional expansion. Mm -hmm. I know you've been uh, knocking the doors of Abi Ahmed in, uh, yeah, in Ethiopia. Ethiopia correct. And uh, perhaps uh, how is the strategy around venturing into new markets, especially now that uh, the other day I was having a conversation with uh, Sheila Mbijiwe, the deputy mm -hmm. governor, and she was very uh, optimistic saying that uh, mm -hmm. we are seeing a good number of African banks now becoming Pan-African. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember her sh sharing an example of saying uh, right now we have over 10 banks having a presence across uh, the continent. Correct. Correct. And uh, this in the next 10 years should actually grow if not um, exceed the targets that uh, banks Correct. have. Correct. I mean, it's and it's valuable you're getting the feedback from the central bank. Mm. So Kenyans naturally are very entrepreneurial, correct? And so if you look at the continent, the banks or the businesses which have expanded are largely from Kenya, mm -hmm. from South Africa, yeah. from Nigeria. Mm -hmm. That's really what has happened. And there are a few from Egypt, but mostly, and now we're seeing more and more from Mauritius. But you have more banks from Kenya than in the region than anywhere else in the continent. Mm -hmm. yeah? we but are we getting value for money? Now, this is a very important question. So, and that's, it depends on what strategy mm -hmm. and what business plan we are engaging in terms of growing our size of our business. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, so these are the two main areas that we need to put in place. And, and we have to be very deliberate in the way we choose our strategy and be very consistent in deploying that strategy across the market. So it's not the same. I say it's not a win-win okay. for every plan. Mm. So in uh, Ethiopia, it's a, a market that remains closed mm -hmm. today yeah. to foreign institutions. 
So we set up a rep office in Ethiopia a couple of years ago in 2014. And it's now, this is the fifth year. So we still don't get the right to have a banking license. We mm -hmm. don't collect deposits. But over time, we are able to understand how the market operates. Yeah, it's not Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, the Democratic Republic of Ethiopia is a different economy in terms of the regulations. And so we are, I would say that we already have one, f one of your feet inside the market, mm -hmm. <laughs> literally speaking, so that when the market opens up, so we may see more of a joint venture and partnership with some of the banks through our digital business arm. So remember, we have a very strong catalyst business called Vuma today that looks at payment platforms, lending platforms. And in there, the system we have built, which is what we're calling as Vuma platform, can do for you savings. We have a product called Weka Weka that mm -hmm. you probably are aware about. Interesting. We are yeah. lending KCB and PESA, right? Yeah. And they're now paying payments as well. Yeah. So those three. And then, the, and then Congo has been another area that we are very keen in going. Mm -hmm. And Congo's approach for us will be perhaps an investment in that market mm. from where we are going to do. So maybe more of like a margin acquisition. Okay. And because we have been able to deliver NBK, I think we have capabilities to be able to manage that process in the market. So you say, do we get value in the way we invest? I would say it's a mixed bag. Okay. In some markets, we have been very successful. So like Tanzania and Rwanda has been very well for ourselves. Mm -hmm. South Sudan is, uh, I say, we had very much success. And we lost all that success. We mm -hmm. come back to zero. Mm -hmm. but, but I will speak in my last comment to you that if you think about business development in our region and being really catalysts, mm -hmm. you have to prepare yourself for upsides and downsides. They believe that enterprise growth is only an upside game. If you don't take risk, naturally we remain smaller. Some players build their business bigger than we are. And then we complain that someone is taking our cake and eating it. The greenback, the dollar today can move from Nairobi today to Dar es Salaam today as we sit. It doesn't wait. And so the reason why Asian businesses, you know, what, what we call the Eastern businesses are mm -hmm. big in our markets because mm -hmm. we have like to take opportunities. Yeah. So for instance, we say we are big. <laughs> our asset size is almost $10 billion. Yeah. It's less than 1% of the largest bank in China. And scale is important in the game of financial services. Mm -hmm. If you want to build your railways, do your airports, build schools, have a hydro project funded, you need bigger institutions. Mm. Even just this building, you need someone who has the capacity to lend you your $50 million to do the project. Mm. And that's what bigger banks will do. Now, we are also refining our strategy. So it's not going in and setting up branches, let's say, in the DRC and trying to learn how to grow somewhere, get no. So we are, we are, I would say it's a mixed strategy mm -hmm. based on the market. And we also perhaps have become better in the way we assess the risk in those markets. So I give it to you that even as so I want to agree that yes, we have not made all the success. Yeah. People always ask me the questions, why not put the money in Kenya? Mm -hmm. You have a perfect shop. Mm -hmm. But greater innovation is not about perfection. Greater opportunity is about getting the real chance to scale a gap that you see in the market. Yeah. That is a success you saw from M-Pesa many years ago, isn't it? And that's sure. what we see today. So if you ask me in the next five years, our strategy will be more refined. We'll get a better return of our investment in the seven countries we are in, including now Ethiopia and the DRC, because we will be in those markets in the next five years. And next time you ask me, delivering our ROE for our shareholders and making sure that the commitment for the valuation of the enterprise is delivered is at the heart of our strategy. Okay. And so the answer will be different in the next five years. Great. And I just want to get your parting shot, uh, Joshua. Of course, we did see the demonetization happening. It mm -hmm. was concluded. And uh, CBK says 7.4 billion was mm -hmm. not returned. Correct. Will this affect the economy in any way? As a seasoned bank, I just now want to get your uh, perspectives as we close. Well, I mean, first I must say, I am very excited about, well, I must congratulate the governor, uh, mm -hmm. Dr. Patrick Njiroga, because this is a very few countries globally are, are bold enough to undertake a demonetization. Forget even about just being successful, mm. just to start. And uh, the way it was executed, uh, working in collaboration with the central bank, is first of a kind on the continent at least. We can revert to India, but our experience is way ahead of what we saw in India uh, two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. So uh, we've been successful. Uh, the numbers are out. Um, most money was exchanged. Now, the 7.3 or so billion which came up, is, I would say it's not very significant in our economy of almost, almost 100 billion. I think when the new numbers for the economy are unveiled, our economy should have touched 100 billion dollars or 10 trillion. 
So th that for me is an important aspect to be able to say, how do we see? So it shouldn't affect the way we do. And we worked extremely hard with the central bank speaking. So, you know, the people we are worried mostly is um, people who don't, who don't always come to the bank. People who keep money. So I always mm. ask for my grandmother, you know, she has this 1,000. Nobody knows where it is. <laughs> she hasn't told anybody. Correct? Yeah. And that kind and of And there are a few cases that <laughs> came up. <laughs> yeah, but, that's, but we spoke everywhere. We went on every single station. We mm. spoke in their language. We followed through. 120 days is a long time. Yeah. But for me, I look at it there on the opposite side. So you should look at how much has been returned. It's almost a 97% return. Mm -hmm. And for me, that shows that we've been very successful. I could be worried if more money never came back. Uh, and also, you know, there may be people who maybe have traveled with Kenya shillings overseas, you know, like the diaspora. Mm. Yeah. Like I remember when I was traveling in, I was in the U.S. in July, someone gave me old, doll, old shillings, told me, make sure you go to the bank, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. I was exchanging some dollars. Make sure. Yeah. This, you go and change them. Uh. So I would say that we do not see an impact, even mm. a mild impact. Okay. It's also important that we are showcasing that Kenya can go into an exercise to refine. Because what is the gap really for this issue? Is making sure your financial sector is not used for illicit financial flows. Mm. Yeah. Because it's important. Mm -hmm. To play in the global economy as a financial center, you need to ensure investors that your markets have got genuine flows of cash. Transparency. Is, this, is, this, is, this is how London, New York, Tokyo, mm -hmm. Beijing, Johannesburg are built. We, this is our dream, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We want to become the epicenter of financial services on the continent mm -hmm. outside South Africa. Now, stronger systems, a better transparent money market, illicit flows, knowing your customers, and transparency on transaction settlement is what you look for to mm -hmm. build an economy. And that is what I foresee will happen for the Kenyan economy. And I think that as banks and the central bank, we are showcasing that we are clearing the path for our next exponential, gro exponential growth for our economy. So it's kudos to the governor. And, and I think it would be unfair if we don't get, take the opportunity. You know, we were talking about the Nairobi International Financial Center. Yeah. This is a precursor for enabling us to become, you know, what people see in Dubai, what people see in London, at least for our cluster of countries in the region of 10 countries. Mm -hmm. And that's for me will be my parting shot. All right. Such a singular honor and pleasure having you on the trading bell. Thank you. Joshua Igara. Thank you. Again. And uh, we should actually write a book. <laughs> <laughs> That's a story for another day. Thank you. Well, we've been speaking to Joshua Oigara, the group CEO at KCB, and he's uh, quite optimistic about the takeover of National Bank of Kenya, indicating that the banking system is uh, quite robust and a lot is in the pipeline when it comes to the consolidation agenda for the banking sector. Well, for now, I want to take a look at markets analysis for this week. Well, and with that, that brings us to the end of the trading bell for this week, having a very illuminating discussion with the group CEO at KCB, Joshua Oigara. Remember, you can always engage with us on our social media platforms, appearing at the bottom end of your screen. And let's keep engaging. My name is Abi Aguira. Thank you for your valid company. See you next week, same time.